So I haven't watched the Chappelle. It looks pretty bright in here when I'm looking at myself here. I haven't watched the Chappelle special yet, the new one, but I will. Welcome back to Andrew Says. I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. Don't forget to donate to me on Patreon, you guys. I needs it. I needs it. But people are upset again. Oh my god, again. They're upset. BuzzFeed. Dave Chappelle doesn't need to punch down. In his occasionally funny new Netflix special, you guys. Yeah, Chappelle's there because he's only occasionally funny. Chappelle continues to make anti-trans and victim-blaming jokes. Why can't he strive to be more thoughtful? Now, when you're looking in Google, the Google result actually says, for BuzzFeed, Dave Chappelle's new Netflix special is unnecessarily offensive. Oh my god, shut up. <laughs> Ringer. Dave Chappelle's provocations have turned predictable. After his fifth Netflix stand-up special, Sticks and Stones, the renowned comic is becoming harder and harder to romanticize. He's, it's just getting harder and harder to stand by Dave Chappelle's comedy and make defenses. It's the same thing with rap. If they did this to rap music, it's going to get hard to romanticize all the murder and strippers and everything. But they went after Eminem because he's more popular. So they go after Dave Chappelle because he's more popular. Let's put the clip on screen, and I'm going to watch it with you because I'll get pulled down immediately, I would imagine, if I do not... Just have it slightly on screen. Otherwise, I'd just show it to you full screen and I'd shut up. But that's not going to happen this time. Now, I'll be real with you. And I know nobody gives a fuck what I think anyway. Uh, I'm not for abortion. Oh, shut up, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not for it. But I'm not against it either. Woo! It all depends on who I get pregnant. <laughs> I don't care, I'll tell you right now, I don't care what your religious beliefs are or anything. If you have a dick, you need to shut the fuck up on this one. Seriously. Uh, I'm going to pause it right there for a second because it's probably get taken down if we don't anyways. But right here, you got to know he's setting them up to fail, don't you? I mean, you look at this and it's Chappelle. It's, unless it's blatantly stupid, analyzing comedy always ends up being pointless like this. And I could be, right here, I could be like, Mr. Chappelle, men are part of it too. We deserve to have a choice, blah, 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 blah. But then you got to think about it and be like, you're just, you're just being one of them. You're just being one of those people. And the people in the audience currently losing their mind are one of those people. And you can't be those people just oppositely. You can't just be the reactionaries oppositely. It doesn't work out, especially live at a comedy show. you got to have some self-control, but I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it now. We'll just play, play the rest of it. This is theirs. The right to choose is their unequivocal right. Not only do I believe they have the right to choose, I believe that they shouldn't have to consult anybody except for a physician about how they exercise that right. Gentlemen, that is fair. And ladies, to be fair to us, I also believe if you decide to have the baby, a man should not have to pay. <laughs> That's fair. If you can kill this motherfucker, <laughs> I can at least abandon him. And then what he says at the end there is, my money, my choice. So it's crazy when people think they hate it when the comedians are fair. As you saw in, that, in the clip, it's, they cheer like crazy when the comedian agrees with them. And they're just like, yes, he's on our side. And people do it even when... Uh, when it's on either side, like conservative or liberal or whatever you want to call it, libertarians and the the centrists, they don't exist. Um, <laughs> but I, but you have to be, you have to just be like, hmm, he's going somewhere else with this, isn't he? But no, the the crazy ideology forces them to be like, woo. But then if it's fair, it's what were they called? Yes, I have notes, okay? I have notes, sorry to tell you. It's not a script, because then it would end up being terrible if I'm just... Mm, 
Dave Chappelle is offensive. Um, but when they end up being fair, it's unnecessarily offensive. It's, why can't he be more thoughtful? Okay? And then we get to Chris D'Elia. Chris D'Elia, Chris D'Elia, one of my favorite comedians, one of the best comedians. He's king of not being offended. Okay, and there's some tweets he's been doing recently. Slightly political, but he knows how to approach subjects. He's, he's clearly good at social media. In the Eminem video and everything, he's clearly good at, you know, not alienating his audience. His audience. But here's a tweet of his. How come if you're offended by someone's comedy, it can't be, can't just be your cup of tea, not just be your cup of tea, I don't know, and then that's it. Why do you have to write 40 blogs about it? The comedy isn't the problem, you are. Some guy replies, isn't this arguing for a world, for a world with zero negative comedy reviews, and couldn't the same logic be applied to you tweeting a criticism about the blog? And then he just says, no, lol. It's because they need clicks, Chris. They're failing. Sorry to tell you. And exactly what I'm talking about with those other articles. And what he's saying, you can't just say, no, I don't like this comedian. Uh, I'm not going to watch him. He's offensive, and he, we can't romanticize him anymore. I'm really getting the Obama thing in now. And he's offensive, and we just can't romanticize it anymore. Can't do it. <laughs> and that makes me lose my train of thought. So he's too, still too fair and too reasonable for people, and they hate that. Even though I disagree with some of what he says, um, in his next clip here that I'm going to show you, people hate how, how fair he is. He, it's like people, they want you to be like, you have to say, screw everybody. <laughs> you have to choose one side or the other, but you can't do that. And, and I've been saying this, you can't do that in entertainment. I'm not a comedian. Maybe I wish I was. Maybe you think I'm funny. Well, but you can't just alienate half of your audience. I'm not going to come on here and be like, liberals are stupid. I'm not going to be come, come on here and say anyone who supports the Green Party is a moron because it's not realistic that they're going to win. You can't just do that. And that's not me being like, these are secretly my views. You can't just, like, you're not going to get through life just hating on people. You might end up uh, getting money in some way. You might be the Tommy Lauren, my wife. Can we put T Tommy Lauren up here somewhere? My wife, Tommy Lauren. I still disagree with how she just is like, the stupid liberals. Still disagree with it. No matter how stupid people must be, you really lose like credibility in my eyes if you can't be more clever than just saying this group of people. You need examples, you need specifics, and you need to be clever to get my vote, okay? So I was talking about this with my friends the other day, but the, it's part of the whole cancel culture. And... People are re reporting porn stars on Snapchat. And it's like, why are you following them if you're just going to report them? And a couple of my friends were like, good. They're going to, they skip out on their taxes or they post stuff that they're not allowed to post. And for other people, just don't watch them. They're porn stars. What do you, what is this high expectation you have of porn stars that if they're not doing what you want on a Snapchat, when you could just go, uh, which is why I don't see why people do it anyways. You could just go buy porn or watch porn for free, featuring the very same person you're watching 10 second clips of. But instead you want to report them for malpractice and their nudie campaigns. But anyways, here's some Crystalia. I'm going to put it, and we're going to put it up in um, Supercuts here, we'll call it. Not the, not the barber shop, but we're going to do it in quick clips so it doesn't get taken down. But here he makes fun of guns, Kid Rock, Joe Biden, and not really Trump. I don't know, but here it is. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't care if you think that all Americans need guns. I, d I don't think that uh, that there should be automatic weapons for sale. That guy who fucking um, the other day who, who, who held the other guy at bay because he was security and he had a gun and he was holding the guy uh, and, it, and it, who brought in a, an assault rifle, a rifle to, I don't know where it was. Okay. And with great anger and hate, They'd like to call themselves elite, but they are not elite. Th now, this is weird. Poor kids are just as bright as white kids. Ah, major mistake. Again, how are you mad at comedians that do this? You can't be mad all the time. He's taking shots at Biden. He's taking shots at Kid Rock in here. He's taking shots at not even Trump. He just talks about his tweet. And, and people seem to hate that he does it uh, going both ways. 
People are investing way too much into these things, into just people they could just not watch. Instead of getting banned from the platform, you could just not watch them. They take likes off Instagram, and they're taking, uh, I think, subscriber counts off of YouTube because this is affecting people's mental health. you got to have some self-control. I mean, they still let it, let it on business accounts on Instagram, which I guess is the way to do it. That's what I would do. But people use this to make money. And as much as we hate that it's about the clout and uh, about people's popularity, at some point people need to have uh, control of their own person, you know? I forget what the phrase is. I feel like it's said an iRobot a lot. Like, take control of your person, take volition of your own body, whatever. Um, my vessel. <laughs> you have to have some sort of control. Because the people who, yes, the people who've let this get to them, they're going crazy. But these people need help. You don't need to punish everybody else because too many likes. We're getting, getting likes. We're just getting in the way of your life, okay? And in the end, I think the, re the real reason behind a lot of this stuff, why people get mad at people like this, like Chris D'Elia and Dave Chappelle, is because they know they have influence. And if they're not pushing what their side is pushing, then they don't like the fact that people might be listening to this and they might, might be changing their mind and therefore their side is losing. But you've got to be all right with this sort of stuff. People from California are going to be more liberal. People from Texas are going to be more conservative. And people from Alabama are going to be really conservative. And at some point, you got to think that maybe this is just what people want. This is what their audience wants. Maybe you don't like the California gun laws and they're stupid. Well, to be honest, it's been failing. Their gun laws don't seem to work there. Do you think the abortion, Alabama, the abortion, oh, did I just come up with something? The abortion laws? If you think those are stupid, completely no legal abortions at all, then maybe that's what they want. Maybe it's stupid. Maybe you're right. But that's why different states exist. That's why state law exists. Maybe you don't like Colorado's weed laws. That would be stupid of you. I'm not afraid to give that opinion. But that's what you got to do. You got to understand that different people have different opinions and maybe this is what they want. And if it's not affecting you, I understand the federal law thing, but comedians aren't not necessarily affecting you. And I think if you're that butthurt about it, then it's probably because you don't want them to have more influence. You don't want their ideas to win. You just do you, I'll do me, you do you over in Alabama, and I'll do me up in Greenland, Alaska? Where do Canadians really even live? Northwest Territories? Do you even know that that's, a, that that's a place? Do you know what the Yukon is? Do you? Gold and potatoes, I think. And that's kind of why I think the EU and globalization is so stupid. Take apart the trying to take over the world stuff. Put that aside. But do you want like a belt... Uh, a sassy Belgian guy with his waffles and neighborhoods where it's just terrorism after terrorism. <laughs> Telling a guy in Scotland who's wearing a kilt, you're in Scotland, you prefer men's in, men in dresses and ginger girls, and this guy from Belgium, Belgium with his waffles going everywhere and his soccer team's better than yours, telling you what to do. You don't want that. It doesn't make any sense. These are unelected people telling you what to do in countries upon countries away from you. So that's a good lesson, I think, to leave on. When you think of the EU, think of weird Belgian guys. Rem or no, wait. Other way around. When you think of the EU, remember Scottish guys in dresses that are also gingers and big. And then guys in Belgium throwing waffles trying to tell them what to do. That's the difference. That's why the EU should no longer be a thing. Scottish guys in dress... Ginger Scottish guys in dresses and Belgian waffles do not mix. And we should not make them mix forcefully. <laughs> Andrew says, this is what you get here.